All right, let's give it a shot. Yesterday we did. A oh, grande Carlo! Come stai? Tutto bene? Uh, yesterday we did have like a couple of problems, technical problems. Um, Instagram Italy have like uh, an overloading of um, traffic, so it crashed several times. And uh, hopefully today we are going to be able to handle the situation and to make this um, blading chat with uh, uh, with Miguel. Uh, Miguel, uh, he was born and raised in Puerto Rico and he went like several times back and forth to to New York because he got like uh, some relatives there and right now he lives in, uh, in Long Beach, California. So yeah. All right. Carlo, come va? Tutto bene? Che si dice giù? Allora, I'm gonna have to settle down the questions. Schino, bellissimo il tuo ultimo, il tuo ultimo filtro, eh, dog? Grandissimo. Schino is a pretty cool Schino that okay. XA. It's a pretty cool. Um, web designer and programmer and uh, yeah he just like did one of those uh, insta filters for your instagram's uh, story so you better catch out because it's pretty cool ah veramente anche noi cazzarola anche perché avevamo delle produzioni con le roi eh, però purtroppo siamo qua siamo qui a ad aspettare dal nazione ciao davide com'è tutto bene? Scusate se faccio così, ma devo spostare le domande, se no non riesco a... I'm sorry if I'm like not looking to the screen, but I'm trying to divide the questions. All right. Yo, what's up guys? Grande Teo, sempre qua. Cazzo, non ho ancora chiamato, scusami. Ma... Um... Come sei messo te con l'inglese, Teo? Tutto bene? If you guys have any question, we can, uh, you guys can um, ask it here to the comment section and then we can uh, share it with Miguel and see what he have to say about like everything I would say. And um, what is going on right now in, um, in Katowice? Is everything fine? I really would like to make like a, one of those blade chats with uh, Mirek or um, someone from um, very well, Grande Teo, or someone from Head on Skate. Next week, am I going to have like a little chat with Tomek? And um, yeah, there are like a lot of people. Um, okay. Yeah, it's... I do think it like we were like in a little advantage of um, the world world situation. But right now it seems like everybody and, and, and every country are like going to be at the same level as we were like a couple of weeks ago and we are still are till this day. What about the family? Family is good? Yeah, I have connected myself a little earlier because um Ciao Erika, tutto bene? Because I do need like um to invite all of you guys to watch here the live stream with Miguel and uh and yeah, I'm super hyped on this one this one because Miguel is a good friend. Uh yeah, big fan of his skating. It's pretty cool on the skate balls and uh, he used to work and I do think it like he still works in Woodward in Woodward West for sure, of course. And um, yeah, we are going to discuss about like um, what is going on in Puerto Rico. 
how is the scene down there in Puerto Rico? Because uh, he does have like a lot of talent, like from Abdul Kohlberg for Miguel himself, and um, and yeah. And then also, how does it feel to work for uh, Woodward Skate Parks? Yeah, that's the thing that we can call it um, Dreamland. Let me send the request to a bunch of people to see if they're here around. Um, yeah, I'm, go I'm going to tell you guys that on Sunday I'm going to have like the live stream with the Brian Argon. Ah, beh, ci sono solo italiani adesso. C'è Matteo e Carlo, quindi posso parlare in italiano. Matteo, domenico, Brian Aragon, qua al Blading Chats. Però il problema è che cazzo lui abita in Denver e, ed è, è, è posto soltanto la sera, quindi minchia mi devo svegliare prestissimo per fare sta menata. Che sbatti. Olè. Ehm... I ragazzi, i pacchi di Cesena. What's up, Kev? What's up, John? All right, perfect. People are getting by here. Say hi to homies. I need to send it to, yeah. Let me see. Ray, Dominic, Michael, Vladi, Biz. I'm actually like stalking all of you guys, man. Yo, Tomo! What's up, my brother? You good? We need to schedule down our blading chat, huh? I'm gonna text you later on. Uh, I was saying, guys, little like anticipation here. Um, on Sunday, I'm going to have the the blading chat, with, the blading chats with Brian Argon. So, uh, yeah, it will be a little early, like quite early, but yeah. I'm going to talk with Brian and we are going to discuss about the situation in Denver, um, uh, what is going on right now with this job within the, the coronavirus and like, um, yeah, like how does it feel, even if like uh, all of those, um, all of those, stay on posto, what's up John, uh, even if like uh, many things have been said during the, the, um, the live, like the Blade, uh, Jump Street podcast at the Winter Clash, as well as like during the, the, the night at the movies within. Um, so yeah, Brian will be, will be here on Sunday. And that's pretty cool. I'm quite hyped. As well as tomorrow, we're going to have Cameron Card. So yeah, lots of American in this week, huh? Isn't it? And um, yeah, next week, we are going to talk with uh, Dominic Bruce. Um, Tomo and um, yeah, several other like people either from United States and from Europe, and also a girl. Uh, I've asked Manon Dorian if uh, she's down to do this kind of stuff, and she told me like she's pretty hyped on this one. So um, I've, I've also I've, I need to settle down a, a day with her so we can. Um, oh, thank you, Betty. Thank you so much. Um, and because I do really like to see and like um, know a little bit more about her and like what is going on right now in Bordeaux and the, the Seba skate situation and, and so on. Hey Daniel, did you see the uh, the reply that Austin said about the, the flexibility? How do I have my cat jumping around? Jasone, Jasone, Ju, Jasone. I'm sorry, those cats. Um, oh, Miguel is here. And um, do you hear, um, Daniel, I'm sorry, do you hear the, um, the answer that like uh, Austin said about the flexibility and so on? Then it was pretty cool, the one that uh, the Austin did. I was quite excited, as you can see. It's crazy because I'm telling every all the time to the people, yeah, I'm a big fan, I'm a big fan. It looks like I'm a fan of everything, and which is the truth, I mean. I'm like uh, kind of addicted of this sport, so I'm a big fan of everything and everybody, so yeah. 
even if I have to say my my favorite blader, it's Will Gordon. Hands down. That's that's my that's my idol. Teenage idol, man. Uh, yeah, if Miguel is here and he's down, we can start the, the chat before before the tiger will cut it off. Yeah, if, Yo. Yo, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Technical <laughs> difficult. difficult. <laughs> All right, from now I can. You good? Yeah, can you hear me? Phone's back. Hello. Oh, yeah, perfectly. You good? You hear me now? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah I'm good. Look, looking forward oh, to, man. to do it till the end this time. <laughs> Yesterday was crazy. Dude, and like I heard, like my, my my wife, she told me like a lot of her like um workmates and so on, they were trying to make and um those Instagram lives, and also it happened to them. They were like cutting the um, the live stream out of nowhere for no reason, with no with no like uh, nah. nothing in advance. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, Scott. And I'm glad. I'm glad the one Austin did went really well. I couldn't see it all the way to the end because I have to answer a phone call. That's really important. But it it was smooth. So that's good. No, no, he's back. <laughs> yeah, it looks like, and I'm looking forward to see this one until the very end. So yeah, yeah. hopefully again. King Tiger, hopefully King Tiger, <laughs> Netflix doesn't you know, exactly. doesn't destroy our <laughs> our, our chat. So please, uh, what was this guy named? Joe Joe Tropi Tropical Joe or something like that? No, Joe Joe Exotic. Yeah, Joe Exotic is too famous, man. He got the internet. I all like. <laughs> <laughs> he breaks the internet. <laughs> he breaks the internet, dude. <laughs> that was hysterical. I laughed so hard. Man, that's that's really that, that's pretty yeah. crazy. Like, not even in a movie, you can get all of those people, all those characters that you can see in this uh, Tiger King documentary. Man, it's pretty. Yeah, the like, stories behind the world. The world is quite a place. <laughs> true. <laughs> true. 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 <laughs> it is. Oh, so um, I would say like uh, we can uh, restart the whole thing because yesterday was a little unfair and like what you were saying was pretty cool. So I do really would like to restart the, the whole the whole thing so we can start like uh, of if you can tell us the situation about the COVID nineteen in Long Beach as you're in Long Beach and uh, what yeah. is going on and uh, if something changed because like last week I was talking with Greg and he told us mm -hmm. like um, um, there was like less people in the street but like there was nothing really really crazy around. Is it yeah. the, is it still like like that or like still a... still the same like people like a lot of people getting precautious some people's getting way too much a little bit of everything but then I can see like people say like, actually taking responsibility what 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 way they what they can with distance and all that stuff and I think people are like, you know trying their best so yeah I, I've been here like I've been barely going out just like it's been, yeah it's been tricky for me I can. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I have a really fucked up immune system, so I like the flu season for me in America is a fucking madness. Like it wasn't like that like when I, in Puerto Rico. But here it's like for me it gets me really gnarly, and since surgery I've been getting sick like often. Oh, always, wow. I, I always had the flu on me, in and out, in and out, in and out. So it's like I'm fucked because I have really bad. Uh, my immune system is not that good. Uh, apparently, a few doctors have told me my situation what I got. I got and yeah. So I have to be like anyway, super careful. True. Can't wait to this shit to like settle down a little bit. And just like just, I mean, I'm just trying to be healthy, like like taking vitamins and stuff, and just take my responsibility, you know, as a citizen, and just you know, true, carry, true, true. carry on. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to see another Instagram video of you shredding some bowls, man. Oh my god, I miss Katie so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet. Yeah, fucking hell. Soon enough, hopefully. Yeah. But yeah, aren't you able to be like a, a little pier rail to skate in front of your porch or something like that? Or like there's no chance for you? Yeah, I have a little, uh, I have a, actually I have a pier rail and have a, like a plastic one and I have a bigger real size one They're here. But my girlfriend have a mini ramp downstairs. It's a micro, like a micro mini ramp. I cannot no. stand up straight because I hit the roof. So it's like a three footer with like a weird extension in the corner. Yeah, it's downstairs, so it's like it's narrow, but it's just you know, it gives you the heartbeat. That's what I'm looking for, you know, like get in the zone. So a couple <laughs> soul grinds, and it's like pretty, it's... pretty, it's pretty alright. But the thing is, like, it's good, but like, like the whole essence of like sharing with your friends and skate, 
like the whole magic of like that co- connection with the homies and just have fun and like, I grew up skating I grew up skating alone like I grew up mo- most of the time skating alone a lot of my time so for me it's nothing new but you know like I pre- I, the older I get the more I appreciate being able to share those moments of skating with your friend just like unplug from like this reality that we have to face with like work and life obligation or stuff skating is that 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 thing that really take you in a natural way take you somewhere else you know it's like the, the healthy the healthy pill the healthy drug you know true so i can't true. i can't wait to go back to those days of like connecting with friends and just go skating with no man you know agendas just go get some <laughs> give some high five, show some hugs and stuff. Yeah, like that. do like yeah. a fucking whole magic of like gnarliness and but love at the same time. All these emotion in one thing just because of skating is like the healthiest toy you can ever have. You know, <laughs> it's like in a way. I, I was talking with with some friends like back then who like interviewed me about like skating and stuff like that. And I told them like instantly it became to me like a drug, like a healthy drug. And then like since the day that I've started skating. The, that it happened like randomly because I was thinking to drop it in early before skating. I was skateboarding and I, I needed to drop like a ramp. And then the day that I decided to drop this ramp with my skateboard, a friend of mine told me, dude, you have to do it first with roll blades. So you have the feeling after that, you can, you can go and try with with your skateboard. I tried with my, with, with like his roll blades. They, they were like, um, okay. a little bit the Daytona probably. Daytona, and Chris I, Edwards. <laughs> I fell, I fell on my back, like on, on my butt. But that, since back. that moment, I was like, dude, that's what I need to do. That is like, it was like a call. And since that, and since that day, it became slightly like a drug. And just like you were saying, like all of this, you know, sharing like the, 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 the energy within somebody that you're skating with or like yeah, getting, yeah. getting juice with skating with somebody. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, something yeah. that really, in my opinion, it's... no drugs can really, can really afford. No, I mean, I mean, yeah, like this, the, the, it's like... I don't want to compare it, but yes, it's some sort of like type of uh, natural meditation, like meditation. You get to a state like skating or anything you choose in life that you're truly passionate about, it can really take you somewhere where it's very healthy for your mind, and body, mind, and soul, you know? So you find skating, like, and it's sick, and you find that, and it's like, it's something that we hope we never forget that skating is that. It's like one of those gifts from the gods, you know, anything. There's not just skating, everything that you find that passion you in a healthy way is a, is a gift from the gods, you know, like just never be like, never forget that reason why you really, really, truly skate, you know, like sometimes you get like focused on trying to be the best or trying to be pro, or all the politics and that stuff. It's like you get, you get distracted to that or whatever. And sometimes we forget this other part, and but if we keep the balance between both, like this shit is for life, you know what I mean? Like this shit is really good, and it's like, yeah, dude, sorry, I go talk, blah, 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 blah. No, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's like a beautiful thing, you know, it's lucky us. It's really yeah. good to like keep nurturing that, keep nurturing that is really important in skating because, uh, you know, like having too much expectation of like how great you need to skate or whatever, yeah, that's beautiful, and I support that shit 100 for 110. But you have to be like also very gentle and genuine with yourself that, you know, like the, don't even forget the main reason why you fucking do this. Like whatever reason was the first one to get you here, like stay on it and like remember that it's really good for you. And you know, the, the gift, man, this is a gift. Like, it's like a blessing. Those, true. It's a, a blessing. You know, like not many people, a lot of people like a lot of people in this life, man, like come here to the earth and you just spend their entire life trying to be like or rich or or anything you know like whatever and they become successful but they never get to experience to find this thing that actually you're not expecting nothing back from it just like the pure enjoyment of what it is and live through life with that thing and be able to share it with friends and have that that connection with people that is like there's no money that can really buy that True. And you're being able to contact with other friends and be like, fuck yeah, dude, like, this is sick. Like, you know, there's no fucking millionaires that can just buy that shit. This shit comes no. from finding something that, you know, so lucky fucking us, you know? <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. Uh, so we do, have like a, we do have like a question here. Old skates or new skates? What matters what you to you guys? Uh, there's a guy who asked us, old skates or new skates? Probably the skates from back in the day, like the Rollaby Daytonas or uh, um, the new them, like, which one would you prefer or like? Uh, me? Um, 
uh, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna try to be very honest with that question. Uh, for me, no. For me, it was there's nothing better before, nothing better in the future. I think I'm, I like the present moment, and I like the past, and I like the future. I still fucking doing sad plans and inverse and fucking <laughs> ramps. People quit that shit in 1998, you know, or 1996. Dude. I still doing it. But I still will fucking try like 360 souls and fucking other fish brain or shuffle before and a grind or shuffle it out. It's just like I'm, I don't have prefer preference like all on back. Yes, I have a huge connection with the past. Holy shit, that's where I grew up. It's like music. Like the first, like for example, like the first music that I was involved with was like salsa, like the Fania in Puerto Rico and the Beatles. That was the first music come to my mind, right? And I always, that, that's my, my beginning of that I love to music, you know, and forever you're going to enjoy that. So the same thing should be with skating. A soul grind is not like, ah, that's whack. No, dude, that's like so, one of the many things that you learn to be able to play, you know. <laughs> There's no old school. Or the toys, oh, oh yeah, that me it's memory and blah, blah. And a lot of people, it's beautiful that we have that feeling of like, uh, how you, that's a word for that. Like when you see things from the past and it, it gives you like that feeling, you know? Like nostalgia? Nostalgia. Nostalgia is a beautiful thing, but we also have to be balanced with it. Because not because other people don't get that nostalgia we get with certain things, not because we, they, they don't get it, it means they're wrong. It's different worlds, different planets. So we have to be really careful. Yes, of course. I fucking love people doing cool, creative shit, expressing themselves around skating. But that doesn't take away that I fucking love seeing Tom Fry doing a fish brain in fucking yeah. 1996, you know? So it's like, it's all one thing for me. So there's no new at all, sorry. It's just the whole, it's like music. I can still, people out there can hear music from the 60s and they can hear mu music from the radio <laughs> nowadays. It, it's just the art of it, you know? So let's do no fucking all in here. Just like, like, careful, balance, my people. <laughs> anyway, I'm going I blah, blah, like crazy, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 please. It's, it's pretty cool. I do really like uh, your, your answer because it's, uh, it really gets yeah. the point because like, uh, as you're saying, it's, a, it's an art. So like yeah. there is no back then or like uh, back then it was yeah. better. Back then it was, it was uh, bad, like worse or whatever. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Picasso's art is made in God knows what century and they're still great. And sure. also new, gener new modern arts are great. So that's the thing. Like, if we keep expecting for our sport to be the next thing, like the next spin, the next, the next new modern shit, the new, the next, what is, the, the cool thing is the next uh, ultra white pants from Senate. You know, if we're <laughs> always expecting the new shit, it's like, you're just burning this shit out. You're just fucking choking this thing. Just like, let it be and enjoy whatever it is and go for what you like. It's like music. It's, it's up to us to listen what we like. So I'm True. Thing with skating. So enjoy that motherfucking ride. It's just too <laughs> short. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> yeah. Going back to the topic about Puerto Rico that we were like facing yesterday, uh, you yeah. were originally, you were born and raised in Puerto Rico. And like yeah. every now and then you were going back and forth in New York, right? Yeah, and, um, and like, how does it feel? Just because we were talking earlier with uh, with with Austin, like, how does it feel like to go skating in New York around? I would say like the golden era, like with Ryan Jackal and all these people, like or John or John Ortiz. Uh, how, how was the feeling? Because yeah. like me, when I started skating, like there was nobody. And, like, imagine oh, you going going yeah. there, like in in, in one of the yeah. capitals. Yeah, I feel you. Uh, first of all, there's no golden era before now. Is it, I think every era is a golden era. Like you said, like when you were going, that was like already like the true fish and all that stuff, you know. My era was like, my first time I went there in a golden era was like, you know, like, like, hit, like skitching and stair bashing and frontside a big rail. And, and then the other time I went back was like 96 knees and it was already like backslides and stuff. So like, yep, what I can say from those days in the 90s going to New York was like, you know, I, it is really sick. It was like... You know, have you seen the movie Kids? No, I haven't. I haven't. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it's an adventure. You fucking go out there and just, like, go to the concrete jungle, man. And it's just, like, really sick. Like, like the adventures of, like, getting in trouble, like, not having money, being on the street to figure out, no place to crash, and meeting homies and staying there, like, traveling, like, through the city, like... Yeah, there's no, there's no structure. 
there's no structure, which was really, really sick. There was no right or wrong. Well, it was the beginning of right or wrong, but it was like, it was pretty pure, you know, and, and, and that was neat. That was neat back then. But that doesn't mean like, yeah, I did enjoy going to New York back then when it was like all that crazy shit. It was like 16 blade stores just in the city of Manhattan, you know. <laughs> I did that, but that doesn't mean that I like I don't go I, I don't go back to New York now and be like, you know, thinking the same thing like, oh my god, I remember it. this was like this, this was like that. You know what? Every time I go to New York is fucking even sicker. Like last time I was going with the homies with John and Dars and like the whole crew and it was like this is fucking sick. We, I remember, like, it was the last time, was the other time before. It wasn't that, one of the last time we went to the Boshi event and we did, we went street skating through the city just like, like we, we, I used to do. Like, we just go, like, put our skates on, get out of the house, skate every, everywhere you find. And we yeah. start with, like, we start with seven of us. At the end of the session, we were 45 of us cruising through the city. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like, like, it's like again, a squad. It was insane. And that, like I said, again, it's not like, Oh, things used to be a lot better before, blah, blah, blah. Like, every time we do that, we, we, we just squishing down the beauty of the this present moment of skating that is the fucking one of the greatest times of skating. Like, there was, yeah, it was better before. It was more op op uh, uh, more uh, opportunities or whatever like that before, but where they went, where they go, like, that's the thing you need to ask for. Right now, it's just some of us here and look the fucking beautiful things are happening. That is pure. That is foundation. So before, yeah, there was a lot of opportunities, and I don't know where you get all these opportunities, but how long they last? Did they stick around for the battle? No. So, like, right now, the soldiers are standing every day out there, like, people True. right now in the skating world. That is the fucking coolest shit. Like, that is, we're going to miss this time in 20 years. If things are getting getting really better and people start dumping money on this shit, we're gonna talk. In, we're gonna be talking about this right now. That this time, that like me and you and the Instagram talking about roller skating, <laughs> like 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 this crazy trip about it. We're gonna miss this shit. So every time we're waiting for the miracle to make things better, or whatever, we just like pushing ourselves down and doubting how fucking sick and pure this shit is now. <laughs> anyway, I lost no, the no. point of what the first answer was. I went in a rant. Sorry. No, no, no. no. You, get, you get perfectly and like it's pretty cool what you were saying about New York, the, the session that you, that you did. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, that was we're talking about New York. Yeah, it was yeah. pure and it's still pure. Like, yeah, I love it, dude. Like, New York is sick. It's just like, open the door, go street skating, like, you know, I, it, it, I guess me, it's crazy because I love that shit so much. That even though I live in California and people always think like, oh, in California, you have to drive from spot to spot. And yeah, it is. If you want to film a crazy gnarly part. But for me, I go fucking downtown LA and park my car in wheelchair and, 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 and fourth or something like that. And I skate 10 blocks this way, five blocks the other, 10 blocks the other way. Next thing, and I'm just skating around the city and finding shit and whatever. So the, you know that it's also like a like an East Coast feeling. You know, it's up to it's up to you make it like whatever it is. And I always carry that. I love just going skating. Like, let's fucking go. Like it's yeah. <laughs> in Europe, jump in the train, let's go everywhere. And all. Yeah, dude, like it's sick. Like I love. Yeah, you always shit. shit. <laughs> <laughs> and like, how is Puerto Rico spot wise? Because like the only thing that I've seen from Puerto Rico are like those BG section. They are pretty intense. Uh, a couple of sections from Abdiel and like Hugs three, Hugs, uh, Hugs four. And uh, BG. unfortunately, I do have like uh, uh, I have seen probably BG eight or something like that. Ocho. And and then I remember Abdiel Colbert, but for for three it was like yeah. um, his section and then like VG 18 or VG 15 there were like some yeah. uh, some some uh, yeah. Puerto Rico. and how is it like uh, down there spot wise like uh, it, it, it's, there, it, it, it's just like anywhere else like like if you're gonna sit down in your house and watch videos and say I wish my spots were like that or like this you don't fucking skate shit so like <laughs> you make the miracle <laughs> happen and with skate at least <laughs> rollbed in Puerto Rico has been I think I, I think it's VG the first VG. There's there's clips of Puerto Rico when Chris Edwards and Tim Rollover went over there back in 90, 92, 93. There's always been a, a, a scene there. Like wow. it's always being skating. Skating, by the way, was small in ninety five, ninety six, ninety seven. Rollover was huge in Puerto Rico in nineteen eighty nine, ninety, ninety one, ninety two, until ninety three. Those wow. are the big golden eras of the scene where everybody was skating. 
when Robin really pops crazy in TV, you know that shit. Robin was dead already in Puerto Rico. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, really? yeah, yeah. Like, like that's something. I, I think I'm moving my answer somewhere, but that's something we need to understand too. Like, like skating didn't get big just because of TV. It was a big part of it, but it's, there's more of that. Anyway, skating in Puerto Rico, the spots. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, going back to the real answer. Um, yeah, we always have like certain. Uh, the, the cool thing, I think very interesting about Puerto Rico is that we were US, uh, we were part of Spain for like 500 years. So a lot of the structure, construction is like every every town have a plaza with a church in the front and in the plaza there's a few little more plazas around it. So every single town in Puerto Rico, there is a lot of little towns, have that. So everywhere you go, you have a plaza. So that's how I grew up skating. I didn't have a skate or anything like that. I would just go to a city, park in the plaza, and skate their plaza and the spots around. So there's yeah. always, like, you just go around plazas. It's like plaza. I think yeah, Italy is like that, right? That the church, a plaza. Exactly. Same. So it's, same, so it's same. the same shit. <laughs> and then Puerto Rico, with time, like, you can see the mix of, we are U.S. citizens for the last 100 years. So you see a big mix of, like, the American uh, construction style and the European style. So it's a little bit of both. You can also drive somewhere and find this, uh, this private building with, like, this perfect weird random rail that you have only chance to jump three times on it <laughs> the, the, like the california way yeah and then also you have the fucking gnarly ass downhill spot with a bunch of other shit on the way and finding like a, abandoned shit or like a weird plaza with a weird structure so it's not like a lot of tons of spots but there's shit to get you know to get with it you know, i don't know you may i like it i like it yeah <laughs> it's, like, no, no, it's no. neat yeah it, it's just cool it looks like a place to be so like you see yeah. you were saying like um you guys were American citizens, like, in, since, like, 100 years. Like, you didn't get 1890, any permit. 1895, yeah. So, like, there were no visa required for you to go to New York back in the early 90s. You just no. You can't go there and fly by, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have a U.S. passport, you know. Okay, perfect. But, I, but my first language is Spanish. Spanish. So, we are really Puerto Rican. So, every time we come back to, to America, we are not U.S. citizens. We are treat like Puerto yeah like you don't speak perfect english like <laughs> we have we are allowed to work we pay our taxes but you have to deal with the other part like you know yeah <laughs> you're not from here buddy so <laughs> it, you know so like it is it, it, bad but it's good and bad it's both things because you can see both sides of the the, the coin you know because like, Cause, like you know? do you think that like uh there are people who can tell you like from like some I don't know random American can go to some guy from Puerto Rico and tell him, "Hey, you're not uh, you're not American." Is it like a thing? Yeah, it ha it's still happening in the in this era, but not everywhere. Not everywhere. No, true, true. In just mean, some, in just some places. Like I, for example, I got pulled over one time in the desert, um, near Tehachapi, between Tehachapi and you know, the Mojave area. You know, it's kind of like cowboy area place. And I got pulled over, and I didn't have my California license back then. And I gave my license from Puerto Rico. And he saw the license, and the first thing he said was like, Puerto Rico? What the fuck are you doing here? What? Where's your papers? And I was like, I said on my mind, I was like, this is like 2 in the morning. I was like, in the middle of the, like nowhere. I was like, Miguel, take a breather and get yeah. ready. <laughs> <laughs> ready. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, get ready for this one. And 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 yeah, he just like you know, I was definitely I took a I have a drink before that. So he he was following me from the bar. So he knew I got got some I, I had a drink. So anyway, he he put me handcuffed me, throw me head first in the car, put the seatbelt with my face down like an invert position, put the seatbelt. And just start driving around the, to pe like to do, keep doing his job for the rest of the night, and then he drove me to a place to this little uh, station because he's trying to find papers to make start the process of uh, sending me back to Puerto Rico. And I'm telling you, like, dude, like, uh, uh, I'm a U.S. citizen, and he doesn't believe it. He keep thinking like he's gonna make the night. You know, I just pull somebody like he's an immigrant. And he's gonna, yeah, so he's doing all the papers to keep me there for like probably like five hours until he like finally understand. Oh, he's like, oh, I, I forgot. I totally forgot that we own that island. What? No way. <laughs> and that touched a very, a very, very sensitive place on my heart because uh, I love the United States like crazy. My, a lot of my family is from New York, but I'm a, I'm a strong, strong believer of like respect and also like, like, 
I care about my country a lot. I care a lot about my little island. So when he said that, I swallow up and I was like, just pause, Miguel, because that's what he wants. He wants to get you mad and start something crazy so he can really make his night, you know? So I swallowed that one up and he just took me to court and to, to the jail. We did the whole thing anyway. Went to jail for a couple of days or whatever. Everything was fine. I was in probation for like a couple, like two years, three years or something. Like that. Anyway, yeah, it can happen. <laughs> but it's <laughs> but it's not. But it's but it's. This is the thing. I hope me saying that doesn't create. I don't want. I don't tell these things much because what happened is like we. If we all just talk about the negative things we saw about the culture and all that stuff. What we do is we we engage in people to separate more, and we mm. feed in the animal. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, like yeah, I tell you a story to laugh about it, but but I can what I can say about the whole thing is that's just one little portion of the entire beautiful thing that is the United States of America. You know what I mean? It's just that's... fucking amazing place. But you will find that like anywhere else in the world. But yeah, being from Puerto Rico, you can you can still be like in the situation. <laughs> Uh, and, but nobody's safe, you know. Nobody's safe. It's like it's up to each individual to know how to walk around. It's being street smart and know how to like, you know. If you walk around already with like, oh, I'm from here or there, they're gonna treat me like this. Yes, it's gonna happen. You you bring that into your reality, you know. But if you walk straight and pride and know like like we like, you know, you'll be fine. So yeah, yeah, I mean, I think we went away from the real question. What was no, the no, question? No, no. <laughs> no, I do love it, and I do really think that what you are saying it's pretty, pretty, pretty smart and it's pretty deep. Like, uh, of course, there are like ne negative parts, but like there are also like positive parts, and we yeah. should not be focused on on the on the negative ones because otherwise, yeah. more negative it means like more like spreading and more like yeah, dividing yeah. and like yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, yeah. You know, we need to get those experience. Like I always believe life is life. Our life here is just like a school. And and problems like that are just like assignments and that's like projects that you need to overcome and learn from it and you have a new a new uh a new skill. You know? So if everything that comes at you, you just gotta like, okay, I'll take it and learn how to be able to move on or be like, Oh my god, I suck and just fail. Just, just like you do in school. Oh, fuck this, I fail, let it go. But if you take things that you in life just like a project of school, like an assignment, and work on it and make it and pass it on and move it on. You just learn a new task and just keep on moving. Life is a school. Life is a fucking, Man. that's all it fucking is, you know? <laughs> that's, that's definitely true, man. That, that's definitely yeah. true. Man. Like, and skating, yeah. for example, it could be like a pretty cool uh, uh, way to learn life and, and, and in a way, just like going in school, right? The what? I'm sorry, skating? Skating, skating. Oh, it's a, it's skate, a proper yeah. school. Skating, skating was my dad. Skating is my dad. Like my yeah. skating was that missing, missing part of me growing up that didn't have. Like growing up, like you know, things happened with my dad. He committed suicide when I'm at early age. Oh, he was gone, like crazy shit. It happens, but you know, it's, it's all good. Like it, like I said before, things that happens to you, you gotta take it and use it as a new learning skill. So you learn that skill and move on. So when I found skating, it really like like the whole process of enjoyment, skating gave me that. The the feeling of uh, being sad and like I and not being not feel that I can accomplish, that was given that. The feeling of accomplishment, skating gave me that. The how to deal with people in the street, skating gave me that. The feeling of winning and losing, skating gave me that. So it really like if you really get this toy skates and just really take the best out of it and really be appreciated about it is fuck we have a gift you know what i mean like it's gotta you know it's hard but it's not impossible to learn and get advan ad advantage and appreciate what those skates have really, really put you in life through it you know like put you with people in the streets like what the fuck you doing get out of here. <laughs> why but it makes me happy then it makes you understand that side of the coin like oh they see things like that and i see things like that so it's like yeah skating yeah I mean, yeah, I don't even know what the question was again. I went no, in no. around. No, no, <laughs> it's amazing. It's really, really yeah. Skating is like a, it's like a, yeah. Skating is like a, it's a teacher, like a lesson. Yeah, like, it gives a lot. True. And like, yeah. how did you end it up? Uh, are you still like? Of course, right now, Woodward has been closing. Uh, has been closed for this whole situation. But like, yeah. you are like working there as a. As a, as a blading teacher or like? No, a... no, no. That's something I would like really talk talk about. 
Uh, first of all, I don't live at Woodward anymore. Okay. I live in Long Beach. I still work for Woodward, like with the certain things and blah, blah. And, uh, but the reality of me working at Woodward was never like to be like, I'm the skating director and that's all I do. I'm there working in maintenance and clean toilets. Okay. I build ramps. I fix ramps. I take care of anything you imagine over there. I take care of it. Why we still have an inline program at West and when Woodward drop inline is because since I live there working in every department that I do, I also offer myself in my own free time in the summer, two weeks of the year in the summer to give inline lessons. Okay. So that's why they're like, um, okay, let's don't drop Pam and Richie. They're the, they're the fucking greatest people. They let, they gave me this job. They were like, Miguel, it's the opportunity you go, and they gave me that opportunity. So they were like, no, we're not going to drop in line. Like, like, just Miguel is there. He's working over there. He, he's saying he's willing to keep the program going. So that's what I did all these years. There was no budget. There was no nothing. It was just me. I was there. And Woodward was like, well, Miguel is here. Like, he, he, he wants to keep the program. I'm making my own flyers, my own shit. And that's Dude. not that I got to get him paid from Woodward extra. It's because I live there. And I know that I don't clean toilets 24-7. I have some free time, so I make my schedule those two weeks of the summer to offer inline. And we keep that alive for the rest, like, nine years or whatever. We're still having it. We have it last year, and we're going to hopefully, if things get organized again with the whole situation, we offer in the summer. We already got a schedule going on. We have intuition week, and then we had the, the other week we're trying to make something else happen, and we all these things, you know, like, like I was there. Yes. And, I, and right now, I'm not live there, but I still helping like what I can and I'm, 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 I'm present. I'm like, yes, organizing things, organize the weeks, contacting the pros. And, and I, right now we slow down with promotion because we don't know what the summer's going to look like. True. But like, yeah, that's how it is. Like people sometimes, it's just really funny because I, 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 I'm, I'm, I don't lie too much like confrontations and shit, but it's really hard, gnarly for me. I, get it. I have to get it out of my chest right now. But some people come to me and say, man, you haven't made, man. You live at Woodward, you work for being a, a skating uh, uh, instructor or whatever the fuck. Like, you have a maid. I'm like, oh, my, <laughs> it's true, it's true. Motherfuckers don't know that uh, my job is not that. My job is, like, get my hands in the toilet and make sure that piece of shit that is stuck there with a fucking knee pad or something that keeps flush to the toilet needs to get out of it. Or maybe I need to go figure out this kid in the middle, like this staff that was being an asshole and to get take care of that. All, all the trash that 350 kids generate. Ooh. I'm the one picking it up every morning, every night, cleaning the can. Yeah, that is yeah. my job. So, and some people, it's like, you have it made, man. You, you live at Woodward, you, you do the inline thing. I was like, yeah, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm doing it. But that's not my job. You fuck face. <laughs> it's like a, a but, little portion of... Uh... That is just something that I just do extra because like, it's not, I'm not getting paid extra for that. I'm, I'm having a salary to do maintenance. That's my check. My check says maintenance, maintenance you know? <laughs> so, yeah. so, yeah, that's what I did there. And, yeah, like, you know, I, I wish I can make camp cheaper for everybody, but it's, it's, a, it's a corporation. And the main reason that holds me up working for Woodward was that, you know, it's the last place in the United States of America with, where inline was part of it to the public of the eye. You know, like, like we're not in TV. We're not in big social media places in America. In America, we're not in big events. Inline is not there. But in Woodward, we still have that that, that little room for us. And there, we can uh, we can show 350 kids every week of the summer. We can we, we I'm allowed to be there showing them what skating really is about. And in those two weeks of the summer, we can have kids there to be in front of these 300 and something other kids. So we like I, I'm, the whole thing was just to bring skating in front of the eyes of other kids you know and also being able to be there for the kids that are willing and dreaming of like going to a place and learn something gnarly in, in the phone pits and all that shit you know what i mean like if i wasn't there or something like that i was no in program so like the, for example the kids from korea they go there spend two weeks and learning all this crazy shit there and those are the reasons that hold me there i live it over there alone by myself in the fucking desert you know <laughs> but i wait for those two weeks of the year that i know will be there and skating is still welcome Thanks to Richie and Pam, they still believe it, and that I'm there, and those kids go there, and they have that north they look up to every year to be like, I'm going to be a woodward this year, and I'm going to learn fucking 1440 double, double <laughs> core 10 or whatever the fuck it is. 
you know, so <laughs> those are the things. I you know I, I grew up dreaming of that and not having that and let that one go. And it's kind of like, I don't want to quit the fight. You know, if this is the only True. thing we got to be out there, I just did it. But yeah. now, I live in, now I live in Long Beach, California, and I still a little bit working with, with Woodward from the distance. And yeah, I do things here with my girlfriend and I work sometimes with John, help what I can. And new chapter. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Glad. Yeah. Great. Great. Talking about talking about John, like, um, uh, how does it feel to work uh, with him and like uh, at the Blady Cup, especially? Like, uh, it yeah. looks like a pretty pretty amazing event. Uh, I've yeah. never been there. I'm trying, and hopefully, uh, I'll be able. To, yeah, you need to experience able. that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. Looks super it's amazing. Cool. I, I work like sometimes part time. It's not been too much lately, but I also work sometimes part time with John, helping him with like a. Uh, shipping orders and like doing things like that always like helping him like when I, i've been doing it since the first time i'd be able to work with john i fucking love what he does like i believe 110 percent of blader own things because they are the ones they know what it is to be a fucking blader you know so i die hard support of that and like also when shima was with, with ssm like the whole thing those things are fucking great so yeah I, it feels great to be able to see john pulling it together and putting everything on the line with them good skates and see them see this thing work like happening and they've seen people identify with this thing that is so important in culture you know like nothing better that players out there even be able to look at a company and identify deeply just like the whole thing like be like this is sick like this is cool like people engage with that and that's something that we didn't really have in the past you know like be able to look at the industry and be able to engage with it like It's a culture, it's an essence on it. And I'm, and I'm so happy that John is doing that because that's what it is, you know? And, uh, and other than that, the Blading Cup stuff, yeah, like I've been working with John with Blade Cup since the beginning of it. And, and, and the whole thing is like, yeah, it's, it's, it's competitive base, but the beautiful thing about it that is not just the contest, it's the celebration of the culture. True. Because that's something that we've been lacking of it for the last 26 years in rollerblading. It's all about, like, we, we start competition circuits and all that stuff, and everybody have that light, that, that switch inside their brains. They go up, like, competitive state of mind. It's a switch that you turn on people's mind. And that's all we have for rollerblading, really, in the last, since the beginning of the sport in, 90, in 1994. We just turn off that switch and we all just think about competitive, competitive, competition, competition. You know what that does? It burns the candle. That's it. And you just burn the fucking candle. But with True. Blading Cup, it's like we have this thing that is always different. And But the main essence is to be able to get everybody together here. And, and like share the true essence of what skating really is. Yes, it's a contest. But when you walk to a Blading Cup, it's like a fucking walking on a museum. Like, you're going to look left, and it's Dude. this, like, Arlo Eisenberg. You go Mama there, mia. and there, and there is fucking Dominic Bruce and his crazy shit. You know, it's this, all these beautiful things, you know what I mean? Like, and it's so beautiful. It's a celebration of what rollerblading really is, the culture of rollerblading. And that's something that is the priority of it. And I'm glad we're finally having that here in America. Wintercast has been doing a really, really good job on it. And that's the, and now more than ever they're actually bringing panels and all the stuff. Because that beautiful thing is like if when you be able to have a competition where it's connected with culture, that's how you build foundation. That's how you build culture. True. That's how you build an essence of something that will never go anywhere. But if you build a competition circuit based on competition circuit, remember that it, you, you have a candle and you're just burning through it. You know what I mean? You're burning through it. And what's going to happen one day? Gone, done. And then you're using the next generation. The same thing, just chewing up, spitting out, chewing up, spitting out. So you have to be really, 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 really cautious about the, the state of mind of competition because all you're doing is turning on the switch, the competitive switch on everybody's brain, and that's all they think. And the beautiful thing about Blading Cup is that that's what we try in, indirectly, and every year we do it like, differently because we also want to make sure we have a place for people that can, everybody can identify with it. Because if, be, like, if we have this, no, all these typical street course, lunchbox, pine, quarter pie, like a, like a competition training circuit, it's just based on 1%, 1-10% of the entire culture. But if we have a street course where it's always changing, you know, and always different, and it's just almost like 98% of the, the rollerblading 
is is just a, like kind of like a street skating. You have to be, and we celebrate that adapting to the new obstacle, just like going street skating or going to a new park. You know, it's like the loss. The basically, it's like the the that the the court, the basketball court, and in this case, the, the skate, but the court there's is lawless. It's no structure. It's always changing. It's always evolving. And that's something that really Blading Cup is really offering is that you don't know what you're gonna get. It's not the typical launch ball. It's typical is it, just you train for Blading Cup. It's like you have to be to do good at Blading Cup. <laughs> you're a diehard rollerblader. <laughs> a fucking go get some every day. It will work out a blading cup it's like it's just like it's no structure you know what i mean like you will see guys like derek henderson jumping from flat to a handrail over his head <laughs> when he's trying to back far to top so 540 out but then you see another kid going from the launch five four here can top so down the whole thing you know what i mean and that is rollerblading not one thing it's so many things so we're trying our best with that and it's a beautiful celebration dude. like i said it's like and that's what rollerblading really is that's why we're still here so we're still nurturing, celebrating the culture of what rollerblading is. So I'm really happy with things like Blading Cup and Winter Clash exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. And also, don't get me wrong, I love the feast. That's my type of skating. I like big fucking ramps, big transition. But that's 15, 10% of what rollerblading really is. So it's like we need a little bit of everything to actually cater sure. to the essence and the real culture of what really rollerblading is. And I'm glad that Winter Clash and Blading Cup are nurturing not just a competitive state of mind because that is so fucking important in skating. We finally True. have it after 20 plus, 25 years. And, more. and like, we, we have like a couple of questions. One is from Matteo, a good friend of mine, who says like, have you ever been to Lausanne? No, I wish. I was too poor those, those times. I was selling chocolates in Puerto Rico to build ramps and build a skate park. That's yeah. something with me, man. Like, it's, it's just breaks my heart because like, uh, I've been here since like, fucking hell 99 1991 1998 92 93 94 95 all those years all i was doing really was like i saved my money to try to go to a contest or try to be exposed out there but it is really hard for me like so i just spent like 10 15 years of my life i created a non-profit organization in wow. 1996 and i built a skate park and i it, we sell chocolates every year to have somewhere to go for the kids to be like able to have to be able to dream to be able to learn how to shred you know what i mean i always dream of ripping there was no facilities in puerto rico like that people would say oh my god you're so lucky that you you know like you skate ball so well you know how many years took me to actually be in front of the ball i was already skating for 20 years maybe i grew up in a five in a, in a 10 foot wide mini ram with vert like you know, like like so, it, it it was really hard. I never, I never got, and I was never a great skater back then. I, traveling to all the way to Europe to Lausanne or something like that, that was way above my my thing. Like it took me a lot. I moved to America with thirty five dollars in my pocket. I, I'm on my twenty five plus year of age. You know what I mean? <laughs> so like, I wish, I wish, I was there in my heart. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's what we need. Lausanne was the like. That was this thing. Like, it's really sad that that back in those days, uh, the skating that was happening in TV was not really nurturing what Lausanne really was, because Lausanne was a celebration of skating in general. The main True. reason it was like downhill and people with fire on the streets and street skating and park. It was a celebration of a culture. And uh, it was really sad that we didn't have a chance to be mature enough in our culture to be able to bring that to TV, you know? It was already, you know, not, no, nothing against Nice and ASAs, but, you know, we, we got trapped on this, like, like, competition mentality circuit. We were like, okay, like, we're doing good. We're selling, we're still, Gator is still buying commercial here. The g shock still buying commercial heels, Slim Jim. All right, we're all making money here, right? Oh, we're good, right? We will just burn in the candle down, down, down without thinking outside the box that the sport is always evolving. It's always evolving. We got stuck with that one-minute run. All right, buddy, this is do or die. The top 10 are going to be pro. And we got stuck with that mentality of skating for so many years that we were, all we did was teaching all these kids that were they were all these kids that were going into the sport teaching it this is the only way and this is the way to do it what you did it was burning them down and they look back like fuck i'm never gonna make it fuck rollerblading blah blah they take off all this shit is whack you know because it never evolved in front of the eyes of the people rollerblading was here and this other pe this other thing was over here doing the other thing 
And next thing you know, we just burned the candle here. And this over here, that was the culture was like nowhere to go and in Japan itself. So we need to find a way to like work things out. If we don't, we're just going to repeat the same cycle again. You know, True. so I don't know what was the real question you asked me at first. I went on a fucking thing again, and I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. It's, it's, I mean, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. So I do really like the the, um, the answer about this whole thing because, like, you merge like uh, uh, different stuff, like talking about the niece and like building a uh, a culture. It's it's pretty it's pretty intense and it's it's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty. What was the like, question at first? Uh, Lausanne, have you ever been to Lausanne? Yes, I mean, no, never been. I think I hope I, I answered the question. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So Lausanne was sick. I hope we can have like things like that. And we are getting okay. there. We're getting there, people. Don't hesitate. Don't say, oh, we need this back or we need that back. No, we need us back. I'm <laughs> charging, <laughs> making sure, appreciating the shit and make this shit work and just like, don't get trapped on that other shit. And it's also like um, uh, for building those ramps at the blading cup. It, it's like a, I would say like you guys are putting your own money, right? Like there yeah, are we sponsor. Like we recycle. Yeah, John. John spent all year trying to find like a founds for like money for this thing. But over here in America, it's quite difficult to get to that level of big corporate sponsors because uh, you know we all know like we have there's a high agenda behind everything. Everybody defending their own turf. You know, so uh, rollerblading, I mean, he, they, most companies don't identify with rollerblading, so they're not going to bash their money on this shit. So, they, you know, so we've been doing our own shit, and uh, we got guys like Tim, uh, Tim, from, from Franklin. Tim Franklin, yeah, and his brother, they have a warehouse. They always help us with building the ramps and transfer the ramps, and one of the dads from one of the kids that skate, they got trucks, they help us with that. So it's a collaboration with all of us, like, and we use ramps from the, from the past, and we recycle materials, and... And we do what we can. John works his ass off over all his other real life shit that he have. He had the companies, he have his family, and he always making time on the side to be able to find the ways to find money in this and be like, all right, boys, let's fucking get it. Like, and, and dude, it's fucking wild. Like, yeah. and we're getting old. Like, I mean, no, not getting fucking old. We just, you know, it's, it's hard sometimes, like, like. I cannot lift no many shit like I was used to back in the day, you know. So it's like we we we're trying to work smart. I think things are getting a lot better now. We hopefully this year is gonna be a lot better. You know, we also adding like a couple stops with like around around different park. You know, we also add like a like a lot of competitions around the states and even in Japan and other countries are adding our secret because we have a, a point a rank system, you know. So like people get points and all that stuff. So people engage and go in and, and, and nurture everybody's, everybody's event. So we nurture, we try and they nurture Blading Co. We nurture their event and we create this something collaboration. So we make things stronger, you know. And so it's been great. This is the second year. The situation with what happened right now with the COVID kind of hold things out, you know. The, you know, and but but we still got everything going. John just updated the website, you know. So Damn. it's very good and like uh. And again, again, it's like, it's not like, I'm glad we, like, bladers are realizing that the miracle will only happen if we make the miracle happen. If we sit down waiting for the miracle, the things that happen, they're not going to happen. And, it the never miracle, and then the miracle comes and we were sitting on the couch waiting for the miracle. The miracle will tell us what you want and your answer will be like, oh, be great, like, be the famous. And you know what? Yeah, we're going to be there, but we're not going to know how to do it. So we're going to fail again. So like, if we're not ready for the world stage, all of us know how to work together and make shit work. When the moment comes that we're going to be in front of the world stage, if we didn't have that experience of going down, all the way down, touch the ground and build our way up, if we don't have that experience, we're going to fucking fail again on front of the world stage. So I'm really glad that we suffer every year to make blading club and we fucking make things happen because you know what? That gives us skills and appreciation and all this stuff. Not like things that back in the day that just were right there just because it was an opportunity because the numbers were growing. There was money involved. People batch, throw money in because they know what they get back. But right now it's like the pure essence of what it really is. And I think it's really fucking sweet what is happening right now. <laughs> man, that's, that's, that's pretty, man. I, I don't know. I have no words, man. It's, it's pretty, everything you is there. Cool. Let's yeah, go. Is here. <laughs> Hell yeah, bam, <Bob>, move. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck um, yeah, me, yeah. 
Miguel, uh, with yeah. that being said, I do really, yeah, would like to ask, uh, uh, thanking you for your time and like for the, the second chance to do this blading yeah, test dude. beside those uh, uh, technical problems we had yesterday. And, All good. Um, thank you very much for this chat because it's been like a lot of knowledge has been like spread. So thank uh, you so much. And, uh, uh, for all I don't know if it was too much knowledge. I just hope like, like uh, I mean, I just hopefully it, it can expi inspire other people to not feel that what they're doing is not. Yeah, guys, I'm so sorry. I don't know what is going on here. Uh, Yara, I'm so sorry for like, everything that happened. Uh, Ciao, Tambu, tutto bene? The Tigers, Miguel. Those are the fucking Tigers, huh? Aren't they? All right, all right. Uh, where you are? Right here and here. Yeah. What's up, my brother? We need to do one with you. Hey, hey, at the end, at the end, those tigers, they made it. It's that show. We're competing, man. The, 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 the internet, dude, they, like, they, it's an addiction. Everybody's going to watch the show, man. You exactly, know I mean? exactly, exactly. They're like, oh, oh no. Man. So, yeah. no, with that, um, with that being said, yeah, um, what you were saying was pretty cool. Like, um, I do think that you really, like, um, uh, are going to inspire somebody with, with the things that you said because they're pretty pretty wise and uh, they're pretty cool so yeah yeah I, I, yeah that's that's all i hope man like i like I, I, i you know i i don't have agendas or anything with what i do with skating what i don't with skating whatever but all i care really is like be able to one day look back being old as fuck and look back and look at skating at the moment whatever that is looking at it and be like those kids are sick they know what they're doing They're doing it. They're holding it down. They're not letting, like, they're not, like, going crazy, like, I want to be famous or whatever. It's like they, they put, the, put in the culture first and make sure they don't, like, get sell out by offers of, like, all right, here you go, buddy. Be the gold medalist of, like, whatever. You know, they always have to put skating because it's not their self. It's everybody's self. It's not one person. Nobody, just one person don't own this shit. Everybody owns it. And we always have to keep in mind that is the main reason of skating what really is. And it's that beauty of the enjoyment of what brings you. And it's not just that competitive state of mind or like that cliche because this is cool, that sucks. You put that shit away. And as long as, as, long as we, I can inspire people to make sure they fucking do this because the right reason, because they love it, that's all, I'm, like, all I really care and all I hope I can in, like, in, in engage to people to be like, Be a, be, just be a fucking blader. Like, just put it on and don't forget that what it is, you know, and like, that's what it is. And hopefully people out there never forget that because we're really lucky to have it, you know? True. So, Definitely. Yeah. Word on that. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, thank you so much again, Miguel. Uh, yeah, the... Take care. And uh, I'm looking forward. As soon as, like, all of this um, COVID-19 thing will go down, I'll buy my flying ticket, uh, my flying ticket to, to, to the Blading Cup. So, I'm yes. looking forward to see you there, okay? Yeah, 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 man. We keep in touch, brother. And, and thanks to everybody in the, that is yeah. online right now. And hopefully like... you guys can see this later. I know Definitely. Down, you know? No, 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 no. It, so... I, I, will, I will upload right. it and, and everything, so. Yes. All right. <laughs> you guys take care. Much love, all right? Take it easy. Take it easy, boss. Thank you so much. Right. Later. Right. Bye. Ciao. Ciao, ciao.